Shalom. First and foremost, I want to begin by giving all the praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Rechak, Wadash. Double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of the great millstone that rule well. And peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect tabernacle of David scattered abroad throughout the earth. And I want to uh, come back and do a response to this segment of the video where they start to get into the whole stranger debate. Um, and uh, I was trying to find the original video, which was on uh, Captain Tazariak's channel. And then I went to his page and noticed that it wasn't there. And then it made sense when I, uh, you know, I went to the feed and I saw that he had made a post with a screenshot of the uh, of the video that was streamed. It happened to be striked. And guess who striked him? The damn devil. All right. He I guess maybe he didn't feel confident enough. You know, that he that he uh that he had the uh, the 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 better end of the debate. You know, he was getting cut up on his own uh <laughs> stream. So he got hurt and uh striked uh, Captain Tizariak's uh video. So that's why you ain't gonna find it on his channel. This dude's a sore loser, man. You know what I mean? But he'll put up a, a, a edited video using your likeness, you know, to make him look good. Because this man, he's only out. He, he, we always tell you about this man. All right. He, he, he you know, he has a whole agenda, but he just keeps failing to re realize that he can't do nothing against the truth before it. It only makes him look bad at the at the end of the day. But anyway, um. This is a part of the video that I want to uh, respond to. I didn't get a chance to do so in the last uh, video I did in response. So uh, in this video, I'm going to focus on this segment, dealing with the stranger issue. So let's uh, get into it. You would be obeying Christ and you would be showing that you actually care about him as your master. But by disobeying him, you show that he's not your master. Now, you just brought up Leviticus where it says, oh, love your neighbor yourself. And you said it's only talking about fellow Israelites. That's a trick you guys pull. It's like you haven't read the end of the chapter, verses 33 and verse 34 of Leviticus 19. Let me read it to you because this doesn't allow you to redefine Matthew 5 by a misreading of Leviticus 19. Because here's what it says. When a stranger sojourns with you in your land you shall do him no wrong now hold on i'm not done you shall treat the stranger who sojourns with you as the native among you and you shall love him as yourself for you were strangers in the land of egypt i am the lord your god it specifically mentions non-israelites and says you have to also love them as you love yourself so you don't get to de-neighbor people who actually so this is where you this is why you have to know the scriptures. If you don't know the scriptures, you know, you don't have a thorough understanding, then uh you'll think that he just confounded you. But uh he just went totally off the deep end. He 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 went totally left. All right. Here's this devil manipulating the scripture for his benefit, for his agenda. All right. Now that specific law is talking about an Israelite who don't live in their in in their native land. They live in a foreign land, but they happen to come back to their original inherited land to sojourn. That's what that's talking about. So if he comes back to the land, like for example, we have the law that um three times out of the year, all the males are supposed to come to Jerusalem to worship. All right, for a particular feast. If they don't live in uh the land of Israel, they live in foreign lands, but they come back for the feast. They're considered strangers and they're to be treated as as they as if they were natively born. All right. So let's read it. Uh, Le Leviticus 19 and 33. And if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, you shall not vex him. But the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you. So that means that even though he doesn't. Uh, he he's not a, a a a resident, but he's coming to reside, you know, temporarily. He's to be treated as one who is natively born in that land, so he has inherited right to 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 dwell there, even though he's not a, a actual citizen there. He lives in another country, so 
you don't you don't vex him. You don't treat him any differently because he still has an inherited right there. What is this guy talking about? Let me um let me go to the NLT translation. Leviticus 19 and 33 in the NLT, it says, do not take advantage of the foreigners who live among you in your land. Treat them like native born Israelites and love them as you love yourself. You know, is that talking about a, a, a Edomite or, or a Moabite, a heathen, an actual heathen? Well, I got a law in, in Leviticus that contradicts this. If you're going to say that, if you're going to make this stranger a non-Israelite. All right. It says, remember that you were once foreigners living in the land, the land of Egypt. I am the Lord, your God. All right. So if we're supposed to take a non-Israelite, a, a actual heathen, and if he comes to dwell with us, we're supposed to treat him as if he has an inherited right there, which that doesn't make any sense because uh, they have their own land. They, they, they don't live <laughs> uh, uh, the land of Judah, the land of Benjamin. Uh, the land of uh, Asher, the land of Gad, the, laugh, the, the, the land of uh, Manasseh. Uh, no heathen was given and inherited right to any of those lands. So if they was coming to dwell there, why would they be treated as if they were natively born there? Why, why would they have to be get that kind of treatment? They were enemies. We were constantly at odds with these uh, neighboring countries. When we came out of Egypt, we was fighting with them. But yet they can come over to our land and they can, they, they, and when they, hey, we want to come stay there. You know, we booking a stay. We want to come there and we expect hospitality. All right. Roll out the carpet for us. Since when? You out your mind. So let's real quick. Let's go to the law of possession. Let's go to Leviticus uh, 25 and starting at verse 39. I'll start at 38 and it says, I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan and to be your God. And if thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxen poor and be sold unto thee. So this is an Israelite who's, he's a, He's dealing with economic hardship. You know, he, 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 he's in debt more than likely. Thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant, a slave. Right. Don't put him in a hardcore bondage. But as a hired servant, so you can take him in and he could become a hired servant. He's, he's working for you and you're, you, you, you pay him his daily wage for his, his work. And as a sword, a sojourner, let's let's look up that word sojourner. And the word is a uh, thawashab. A, a sword, sojourner, stranger. It says up here a dweller, but not outlandish, especially as distinguished from a native citizen and a temporary inmate or a mere lodger, resident, alien, foreigner, inhabitant. Sojourner stranger So you, you're going to have Israelites coming from different places Alright Maybe because of the scattering Right through these different captivities Or uh, migration Right You had you had a, a, a Epicenter of Israelites down in Egypt Jake was always living there So if Jake had to come from Leave Egypt and come up to Jerusalem during the Passover or, or whatever Feast they would be sojourning in uh in Jerusalem. So they would be strangers. All right. Or in, in this case, you know, Jake comes to move move with you from another location because he 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 needs somebody to to work for. They Jake do it in, in, in this country. You know, they they uh not, they're not doing too well financially, but they get a job opportunity and and, and they have to relocate. So they go from, they probably move out of state into another state to take this job opportunity so they can, you know, make a living. They'll do that. Come on, man. It says, and shall serve thee until the year of Jubilee, right? The year of release. 
and then shall he depart from thee, both he and his children with them, and shall return unto his own family, and unto the possession of his fathers shall he return. For they are my servants, which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as bondmen. It's talking about your fellow Israelite. Because it's going to tell you uh, further down who can be your bondmen and bondmates. You, you can't make your, your own fellow brother, which would be your neighbor. You can't make him a, a, a bondman. All right. It says, thou shalt not rule over him with rigor, but thou shalt fear thy God. Now, here's where it makes a distinction now. Both thy bondmen, an actual slave man, and thy bondmaids, a slave woman, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Of them shall you buy bondmen and bondmaids. So why is it that a, a, a stranger that, that, that comes into the land, but he happens to be of, of, of your, your kin, you're not to treat him the same way you would treat a heathen. You're not to uh, uh, rule over him with rigor and make him a bondman, but an actual heathen, you can do that. Now, if you're trying to say that the stranger is supposed to, uh, the actual heathen is supposed to be your neighbor that you show love to and roll out the carpet for, then this law right here would be a contradiction. Because... It's not telling you to, to give that same treatment to a heathen. So what he did was he attempted to make the stranger in Leviticus uh, 19 and uh, uh, 33 and 34 a heathen so that he can uh, 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 quantify what he's trying to argue in Matthew the fifth chapter, by making those uh, neighbors, you know, in, in in Matthew the fifth chapter, about non-Israelites, so he's trying to basically uh, take what Yahweh Shai said out of context for his own personal gain, his his own personal benefit, and he's wrong. But he tried to you know guilt shame to Zaryak like he was wrong, but you you wrong. So this law right here contradicts his whole premise. All right. Both thy bond men and thy bond maids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Of them shall you buy bond men and bond maids. Moreover, of the children of the strangers that, so, that do sojourn among you, of them shall you buy and of their families that are with you, which they begat in your land, and they shall be your possession. And you shall take them as an inheritance for your children after you to inherit them for a possession, for they shall be your bondmen forever. All right. So if you have a heathen and uh, they dwell with you and, uh, you know, you, you, you work them, then they uh, have children. All right. And then their children are going to be a possession. All right. It says, but over your brethren. The children of Israel, you shall not rule one over another with rigor. Uh, but you know who ruled with rigor over us? Pharaoh. Put us in hardcore uh, bondage, man. So. <clears throat> we know that the stranger. Is, is, is talking about uh, fellow Israelites. And you got to understand the context. Matter of fact. Um, let's go back here uh, real fast Go back to the KJV And I'm pretty sure the word usage In the Hebrew for the word stranger In this verse is talk, is, is the, the Hebrew word is uh, gar And you go there, there it is, gar Alright, and majority of the time If not all the time When it uses the, the word gar It's an association with being an uh, uh, Israelite foreigner, okay? It says a sojourner, a temporary inhabitant, a newcomer lacking in inherited rights of uh, foreigners in Israel through conceded rights. So this is talking about an Israelite, okay? That's why we always use the example of um, the Passover, the, the, the stranger that can eat of the Passover versus the stranger that can't eat of the Passover. There, there's two different 
Hebrew words that are being used to explain which stranger is uh, allowed and the stranger that isn't allowed, all right? Uh, Exodus 12 and 43. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof, but every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised them, then shall he eat thereof. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth all out of the flesh brought out of the house. Neither shall you break a bone thereof. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, then let him come near and keep it. And it shall, he shall be as one that is born in the land. That's, the, that's the Leviticus 19, uh, 33, 34. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. One law shall be to him that is homeborn and to the stranger that sojourneth among you. Okay. So that means a stranger is under the law too when he comes to, to serve. And of course the word there is stranger. Okay. And you look up here for stranger it says where it says no stranger shall no stranger eat thereof the stranger is bun the car which means son of stranger foreign alien foreignness that which is foreign foreignness foreign gods alien foreigner all right so no heathen is able to to, to keep this all right So let, let's, let's go to the New Testament now. Let's go to Acts, the second chapter. Yo, you had uh, uh, Moses' son, Gershon. All right. Why was his name uh, 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 Gershon? And his root word is it, the root word of his name is Gar, which means stranger or foreigner. Because he didn't have he 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 had uh, Gershon in a foreign land. He was coming out of Egypt. So this is dealing with the day of uh, Pentecost, which we all familiar with this. Uh, Acts 2, and uh, starting at 1, it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a of a fire, and it sat upon, yeah, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. So that means that these are Jews coming from all these different regions, all right, all these different territories outside of Israel, the land of Canaan, all right. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were and they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And now hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born. They were basically tripping of the fact that these men were speaking in all these different languages that you would have to have been born and in, in, in living in foreign uh, regions to actually know those languages. These men were right there in, in, in Jerusalem and speaking all these foreign languages to them. So they were tripping out. Don't these men only speak this dialect of Hebrew? What's going on here? Right? Parthians and Medes. And these are Jews, by the way, coming out of the land of the, the Parthians and the Medes and the, uh, the Elamites, right? And the dwellers of Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cappadocia and in Pontus and Asia. So throughout Asia Minor, Phrygia and Pamphylia and Egypt. Like I mentioned, that you know, you had a, um, a epicenter down there in Egypt, right? And in parts of Libya about Cyrene. And strangers of Rome, so you, you, got, you got some strangers coming from out of Rome, out of Italy, 
to come to Jerusalem. It says Jews and proselytes, newly converts, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of the Most High. All right. So these would all be considered strangers or sojourners coming for the Feast of Pentecost. Example right here. And these were all Jews, devout men. That's why they're coming to the feast. And they all heard uh, the sermon of Peter. He referred to all of them as you men of Israel hear these words. All right. So there's no mistaking for who the strangers are. OK. So, no, the, 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 the heathen is not your neighbor. And that's not your neighbor that you're supposed to love as yourself. It's talking about a, a fellow Israelite. All right. You're not supposed to remove him because he lives in a, in a foreign uh, land or a foreign country. And that's what the circumcision was trying to do to the uncircumcision, because in their mind, they know that these these Israelites did not grow up under the, the, the covenant. They didn't there wasn't uh, practicing the customs and the laws. You know, under the first covenant. So in their eyes, they were straight up heathen. So they were denouncing them and they gave you shit if you was even caught a fellowship in, in, in eating with them. You know, like the controversy with, uh, you know, uh, James and uh, Peter. You know, and, and Paul had to, you know, confront Peter about how he would change his uh, behavior when he got, when he was around the heathen. And then when he got around, you know, his brothers and those of the circumcision, but they, they were all Israelites. That's why the Lord said there's no difference between them. Okay. These were, they were just strangers of the commonwealth. You know, they didn't have, they wasn't up under the law. They, their families, you know, grew up under a whole nother uh, culture, which was predominantly uh, uh, the Hellenization. They were, they were Hellenized. So through Yahawashai, they're, you know, even though they're classified as uh, Greeks because they grew up in the Greek culture, and they still, because of their their um their bloodline, they're still are Israelites. So they're to be treated no different. There's no difference between a Jew nor a Greek. Now let's go to First Peter, where you had all these strangers that were scattered throughout these Greek provinces. All right. Um, first Peter. No, it's like I meant to go to the first chapter. Yeah, first Peter one and one, it says, Peter, an apostle of Yahweh Mashiach to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia. So these strangers were scattered throughout these. Uh, uh, Greek provinces all right throughout Asia Minor okay these were all Greek colonizations and then they used the word strangers and this is the, the Greek word for it Strong's G 3927 Parepidemos Parepidemos and it says an alien alongside a resident foreigner one who comes from a foreign country into a city or a land to reside there by their by the side of the natives. Okay. And then it uses the word scattered, diaspora. Now what people were dispersed? It says dispersion, i.e., especially the concretely the converted Israelite resident in Gentile countries, which are scattered abroad. All right. So these lands that they were coming from were all Gentile countries. And Peter calls them elect, elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the father, through sanctification of the spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. All right. And let's go to the next chapter because this is this part of the same letter. So we know who the audience is of this particular letter. Let's jump down to verse uh, 9. And it says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, 
So these strangers are part of an holy nation. Why? Because going back to Deuteronomy, it said that, that Israel will be a, a special people unto the Lord, a peculiar people. A whole, you are a holy people unto me, a special people above all nations that are upon the face of the earth. That's the holy nation, Israel. A peculiar people that you should shew forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Our people were in, in darkness at, at a point in time because they were serving strange gods, keeping uh, the, the customs and practices of these uh, heathens, these foreigners. So they were in darkness. But once you uh, once the light of the gospel shine unto you, 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 that's you being called out of darkness into the marvelous light. Which in time past were not a people. What people would be uh, said that they were not a people? You go back to the law in Deuteronomy uh, 32. And then also in Hosea. And the land where it was said unto them, you are not my people. There should be said, you are the sons of the living God. Hosea 1 and 10. He says, but now are the people of the Most High, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Hosea, the second chapter. Talking about Israelites. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. All right. So there's a certain conduct that is to be uh, expected of you once you come into this truth. All right. When you start to become a new creature. And this was part of the con uh, conversion process. Abstain from fornication, from blood. All right, from, from three things uh, strangled, from meat offered unto idols, so that they can have a, a form of holiness when they come to serve the Lord. He says, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, that they may, by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify the Most High in the day of visitation. All right. So this is just another example. All right, of, of the, the stranger. So this devil, he tried to be slick and, 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 and make this, you know, a, 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 a matter of, of a heathen when it has nothing to do with them. OK. That that neighbor, that stranger that 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 shall uh, be unto you as one that's among you, that's natively born. You shall love him as yourself. That's talking about your fellow Israelite. It said it's, it's no different than what it said up above the, the scripture that Tazariah quoted. All right, Leviticus nineteen and um, uh, uh, eighteen: Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord, and that goes for the stranger too, an Israelite that don't live among you. When he comes around you, he's to be treated as one that is born among you, and the law still applies. All right. That's all that's simply saying. But the devil, he, you know, he can't be truthful. All right. And that's why, you know, if he came up to the camp pulling this, you know, we we would. There's a there's a, a lifeline. <laughs> Let's just put it like that, because. He'll be known, he'll be blatantly wrong, but he'll still have the nerve to speak over you, talk loud. Try to out talk you. Uh, speak in circles, use word salad. He'll he'll pull all these tactics to try to you know uh, make you look bad on on his footage, so that he can post post it up for these 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 dumbass uh, plantation antichrists. Yeah, you just confounded another Israelite group. It's like, come on, man. But a good thing the uh, the, the apostle captured a good portion of this before it got taken down you know uh when you go to vocab's page and, and try to look for the video the part of the video is up but you could tell he clipped out uh, uh the rest of the video so it's really not the whole video because where he started to look bad when tazariak was cutting into him you won't be able to find it so this devil he's he's he is hurt and he's cut all right, and I can go into other scriptures, you know, they'll try to go to Isaiah 56 about the son of the stranger, right? <clears throat> you know, 
when a stranger tries to cleave, they'll try to make that a non-Israelite uh, thing. That's not talking about a non-Israelite. It's still talking about an Israelite. All right? So, anyway, Lord willing, this was edifying. I'm going to give all praise to y'all. Bashim y'all shy. And until the next one, Shalom.